This is what I had to do when my ex-wife asked me, Mitch, could you clean the snow off the car, please? Take a look. But if the snow is heavy because of a top layer of ice, you may be able to break off the surface chunks and lift them away from the paint as the first step. Obviously, pushing ice chunks across your paint is not a good look, so lift and remove them if you can. Now, with the top layer gone, gently move the powdery snow with a modified snow broom, but do not punch down so far that it touches the paint. If you're not familiar, a snow broom is a rubbery cushion paddle attached to a pole. Now, that's not super complicated, but it's obviously way better than just a regular broom, of course, but still not something I would allow to have direct paint contact if it was just dusty, as we mentioned earlier. So, to add some protection to the broom, we attach two microfiber towels, which are safe on the paint, in case of an accidental touch. First, unscrew the pole from the paddle. Next, lay two microfiber towels together on your workbench. Now find the part of the towel that overlaps with the threads. Use a razor blade to cut out one hole in each towel on each side, but do not cut through the stitched edging. Afterwards, stick the pole and the threads through all four slits in the towel and screw it back into the paddle. I also like to wrap the edges of the towel with rubber bands to hold the microfiber in place on the paddle. Obviously, the rubber bands will not allow the paddle to slide smoothly across the paint, but it doesn't really matter because it shouldn't be touching the paint anyways. Again, wrapping the cushion is just a precaution in case you accidentally go too deep or are too aggressive. With your microfiber broom at the ready, gently remove the next layers of snow without pushing down on the paint. Now, the goal is very simple. Remove as much snow as possible without touching or squeegeeing the paint. So Welcome back, guys. And now, this is what I'll be doing by 2025, when the new wife-to-be, <laughs> whoever that is, asks me to clean the snow off the car. Take a look. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, The Wealthy Mindset. It's yours truly, Money Making Mitch. And as usual guys, this is not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence and research. I hope you found those videos to be entertaining, but also informative. You see, the ET9 is not a car. The ET9 is a futuristic spaceship. Now, NEO was last trading at $6.20, 20 cent up. The 52 week low is $5, was $5.30 and the 52 week high was $16.18. As a disclaimer, I have 2,260 shares at $3.53 and on the SoFi platform, I now, have, I now have 701 shares at $7.97. Before I continue with this video, I would like to remind you guys to hit that thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to think about doing so because in this channel, we're trying to wake up the middle class so that we too get a piece of the pie. As of today, NEO had over 38,413,000 swaps and counting. So again, I always say to you guys, all of the negative Nancys, the trolls, the shorts, the propaganda news media in the West that kept saying, this was a waste. Why are they wasting money building these things? It's not that they did not know that this is the game changer, but they were trying to convince you as to why you should not buy shares in this future behemoth that's gonna make us millionaires. Now, NEO's charging map now accesses over 1 million third-party chargers. What was that money making, Mitch? I'll say it again. NEO's charging map now accesses over 1 million third-party chargers. By the end of 2023, there were 2.73 million public charging piles in China, according to the Industry Association. NEO's charging map access to third-party chargers also continues to grow as the company builds out its own charging network. And I say this again, 
a lot of people are only focusing on our delivery numbers, which is going to change with our sub brands and what have you. And as we continue to grow into other countries, but as we continue to grow into other countries this year, as we spin off the chip business and we spin off the battery business, which I hope some of you did not forget is coming that we're going to get shares of. And we continue to make money from perhaps even the in-house motor that we'll be making for the sub-brand. We'll probably even be able to spin that off and sell uh, motors to other EV manufacturers who are not making their own motors. As we grow into other countries and all of the things I've just described, we will be generating revenue, not just, not just from EV deliveries but also from the phone, also from giving back electricity to the grid. This is why I say, as our earnings report, uh, next quarterly earnings and the quarterly earnings after that, people are gonna say, well, where are they getting, making this money from? Uh-huh. So as of, uh, as of February 18th, NEO's charging map was connected to more than 1 million third-party charging piles the company announced today. This was on Sunday, guys. By the end of 2023, there were a total of 2.73 million public charging piles in China, according to the China Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure Promotion Alliance. NEO, as of Sunday, which was yesterday, added a new battery swap station in China yet again, bringing the total to 2,374 of which 774 are located along highways. The company also has 3,712 charging stations in China. Yes, we don't only have battery swapping. We have more charging stations than any other EV company in China. Yes, you heard that right. A lot of people still think NEO only has battery swapping stations. I remember one time Kathy Woods claimed, oh yeah, they're a battery swapping company. <laughs> I have some news for that lady. We're not just a battery swapping company. Wake up, woman. Now, the company has also 3,712 charging stations in China, including supercharging stations and destination charging stations offering. Are you guys ready for this? 21,601 charging piles. You heard that right. NEO has added a total of 15 battery swap stations so far this month in February, a slower pace of construction than in regular months as China has just finished its Lunar New Year holiday. So we expect that number to ramp up in a massive way again. February the 10th to the 17th was the year's Lunar New Year holiday and February 18th was the first working day of the Lunar New Year, albeit on Sunday. <clears throat> NEO unveiled its fourth generation battery swap station, Supercharger, at NEO Day 2023 and the new 640 kilowatt hour Supercharger, which is again a game changer. The upgraded battery swap station, which will feature 23 battery compartments and increase the capacity to, to 480 services in a single day, will begin installation in April. Now remember, with the current swap stations that we have, we already did 38,413,000 and counting. This was of Sunday I recorded this video. So imagine when we add that another thousand this year plus, how much swaps we'll be doing, how much revenue we'll be getting, how much power we'll be giving back to the grid. Booyaka, as my Jamaican brothers would say. Now, NEO's third generation battery swap station is capable of storing up to 21 battery packs, up to 13 in its predecessor, and five in the first generation. So you see how we are scaling every generation, every new generation battery swap station is on another level. Excuse me, guys. NEO's fourth generation supercharger station, which has a peak power of up to 640 kilowatt hour, will also begin installation in April. <laughs> NEO plans to add 1,000 battery swap stations in China in 2024. I'm getting ahead of myself. I just said that. Bringing the total to more than 3,310 
The company also planned to add 20,000 new charging piles, bringing the total to more than 41,000. So do you guys think our revenue will only be coming from selling EVs? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> we are the future of gas stations. And we are ahead of the game. So we're going to be like the Chevron mobile of the battery swapping companies. And our revenue, like I said, is going to come from the phone. It's going to come from the chips. It's going to in-house chips. It's going to come from the in-house batteries. It's going to come from the in-house motors and so much more. Energy giving back to the grid. No matter what country we go into, they will have to pay us for energy. Imagine when we hit the Middle East and one of my friend Neo San Francisco, shout out to you, my brother. He sent me a picture of, I believe it was an ET5 in the Middle East. And King William Lee was over there. I was very excited to see that because we know we're going there soon, right? We know that. We know that we're going to be hitting the Middle East because they want the best. And who has the best in the East and the West? Neo, that's who. So I hope you guys found this video to be informational and inspirational. If so, guys, don't forget to share this all over your social media, TikTok, wherever you choose to. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, you might want to think about doing so because in this channel, we're trying to wake up the middle class so that we too can get a piece of the pie. And like Fitty said, we get rich or we die trying, guys.